We welcome you this morning. I've got several announcements I need to make, and please uh, be aware of those. We're going to meet next week at the Well of the Midst outside, and then the last, beginning the last Sunday of October, we'll be back inside. We've got the pews uh, with green tape on the end of them, and you skip a pew, and that's the way it will work. We have the offering box in the best of you, but we also have offering plates here at the front of you when you come in if you want to put it there, but we'll not be coming up uh, putting our offering uh, in the offering plate. You can sing along with us uh, under your mask if we're not standing. Uh, the first song we'll be singing, we're doing all three of these songs this morning, a cappella. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing.
We pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Our next hymn, <clears throat> excuse me. Tim, would you turn off the, uh, right, the vocalists up a little bit? I mean, uh, Steve, turn them up a little bit. The next hymn is To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So Through every day, or all the way. 
that have come together and has been meeting in the fellowship hall, uh, they'll be meeting in the sanctuary here following the worship service. I feel the need this morning for us to pause, have a moment of silence, to pray for our country, but also to pray for those of our church family that it's just COVID, they've gone through that. We've got several church members uh, that has it now. Uh, so please, please let's pray for them and pray for God's will to be done in the life of this church and in the life of our nation. And I don't know to do this, but I'm just going to encourage you to please vote this coming November and vote what the Lord has laid upon your heart. Would you bow with me for a moment, and then we'll have prayer. Eternal God, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. God, we lift up our nation to you. Lord, we lift up the election to you. We pray that your will be done. And Father, we lift up those that have the COVID virus. Lord, wherever they may be, all over this globe, people have this virus. And Lord, it is hit close to our place, our homes, here in Halifax County, and even in the life of our church. And Lord, we pray especially for those that are shut in, that, it, that you should be so faithful to the house of God, but because of health reasons, they're convalescent at home. We pray for those that are grieving. Lord, we ask that you would just comfort their families as only thou can do. Now, Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I was set enough. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Two passages of scripture that I'm using this morning. The first taken from 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And the next text will be from Hebrews chapter number 1. And as I was reading over these passages of scripture, of the message, I wanted to do justice to the text that has been written in the dispensation which it was written in. First, I want to read from 2 Timothy. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own love shall heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. I think we're there. I believe we're there right now. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of all things. Hebrews chapter 1. God, who in sundry times and divers manners, spake unto us in the past by the fathers, and by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by his word of his power, when he had by himself, now this is very important, that you get that phrase in that third verse of Hebrews 1. He by himself, no co-redeemer, he by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. As I was reading over these scriptures and reading over my message this morning, there are two passages of scripture that came to my mind out of the book of Psalms. The first one is found in Psalms chapter 9, verse 17, and the next one is found in Psalms 11, verse 3. Listen, give a, listen very closely to these texts. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. Are we there? Yes, we are. We are there. All nations that forget God. Psalms 11.3 If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It is time in the life of our nation and in the life of the church, in the life of every born again, spirit filled Christian to pray. And to let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. What is God's message to us for the mess that we're in? Matthew told me earlier, he said, Jack, please try to stay in one spot because I'm taking this and I don't want to have to go all over the place. It's hard to stand in one spot when you're used to moving around. But uh, I appreciate that ministry in our church. First of all, God has a message of faith for the unbelief. God has a message of faith for the unbelief. A message of faith to this nation. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When, when Paul was writing to his son in the ministry in uh, Timothy, he said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I read an article yesterday by one of the former political officials, and if I called their name, you would know who they are, but I'm not going to call their name, that said this, the reason, now listen to this, the reason that young people are leaving the church is because the church is too judgmental and too alienated. What that person, and I, I read the Taiwan article, what that person was saying is we should not call wrong wrong. That's in essence what they were saying. If you read the article and if you want to know who it is, come to me after the service and I'll let you know, know what website to go to and who said those things. That the reason young people are leaving the church is the church is too judgmental and too alienating people. Well, my friends, when Paul wrote these words to Timothy, he said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, they don't like the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What they want is something that will make them feel good. Well, folks, I'm not Dr. Beal, and I'm not Joel Holstein, so I'm not going to make you try to make you feel good. I want you to be better just like I want myself to be better. And the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, for, for the word of God is powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, ever which way you swing the word of God, it cuts. The word of God is what brings conviction through the Holy Spirit. God has a message of faith for an unbelieving world. 
It is staggering to see what is happening in our country today and the mess that we are in. And folks, I know you can't blow your horn, but you can say anything. Our country is in a mess. I'm not here as a prophet of doom and gloom. I'm just here to speak what thus saith the Lord. God has a message of faith. What is faith? Well, the Bible definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When he spoke in Hebrews chapter 1, I, I love the, the very first verse of this chapter. He said, God, who in sundry times and divers manners spake to us by the prophets and by our fathers, but now he speaks to us by his son, who by himself heard our sin. When God spoke in times past in the Old Testament dispensation, he rose up prophets that would uh, say, Thus saith the Lord. And many of those prophets were killed because they stood up and they said, When, when a prophet began his, his message with, Woe unto those. You better believe something was coming. Judgment was coming. What did he say in the book of Amos, chapter 6? Woe unto those that are at ease in Zion. Amen. He had a message of judgment. And God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of love. But God is a God that his holiness yes. demands justice. Amen. He has a message of faith for the unbelief. He also has a message of boldness for the fearful. Whosoever is fearful and afraid, he talks about those that live in constant fear. You know that the devil is having a field day. For the last seven months, he has had a field day. Because he has people so afraid, Amen. so afraid. Uh, you can't go there. You got to do this. You got to do that. And and let me let me hasten to say this: as when we're meeting inside, we will practice. We will practice social distance. We will we will do the things that are necessary. But I am not. I refuse to allow a, go a government to tell me what to preach Amen. and how to preach. Amen. Amen. Let God arise and he He has so many people that are fearful. And God is not the author of fear. He is the Prince of Peace. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God wants his people to be at peace. That doesn't mean that we are to become complacent. But God does not want us to live in fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us a spirit of love and a sound mind. And there are so many that are living in fear. They have so secluded themselves from the outside world that their lives are just in, in a constant fear loop. That's not a problem. That's a Satan. And Satan is having a field day by trying to put the church, trying to put the people of God in a spirit of fear. But folks, I'm here to tell you, we must let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Also, he's given us a message of strength in an age of fault. Have thou not known, have thou not heard that God who, who lives inside of us will give us peace? In Isaiah 40 verse 31 it says, But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. A spirit of peace. 
and strength for an age that is faltering. Fainting. The Bible says to faint not. Don't be weary. And many times in our own spiritual life, trying to do what is right and what, what we know that God will have us to do. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians. He says, don't become weary in well-doing. And that can happen, especially to the Christian. Get weary in well-doing. Many times when I've had to gauge myself and remind myself that I can be so busy with the work of the Lord that I miss the Lord of the work. And God will give us strength in a time when we feel like we are faltering. He will give us a message of contentment in an age of work. In Psalms, 1, in Psalms 37, verses 1 through 3, he talks about delight thyself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Commit thy ways in the Lord. What he is saying, contentment, my friend, is not what is surrounding you. Contentment is what is within you. You can have all the stuff in the world and still not be content. Contentment is, is for what's inside of you. And it only comes by having a knowledge of the Lord. The Bible says godliness. Listen to this. Godliness. This is what Paul was writing to Timothy in the 6th chapter in the 1st Timothy. He says godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. He's given us a message of contentment. In an age of worry. Paul said, Timothy, he said, do the work of an evangelist. And as I was looking at these two portions of scripture and, and this message, what 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 how does these two texts relate to a word from God to America for the mess we What he has said to Timothy, you preach the word. And I'll take care of the results. What he said in Hebrews, he said God spoke to the prophets and they obeyed God. But he says now he is speaking through his son, Jesus Christ. And now he speaks to us. People say, well, I haven't heard from God. Have you been listening? He still speaks. God does not speak to us in an audible voice. But I will tell you this. He will speak so deeply in your spirit that it will sound like an audible voice. And I thank God this morning that he still speaks. He has, hasn't stopped speaking to his people. He speaks through the third person of the Godhead, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's given us a message of contentment in an age. He's also given us a message of humility in an age of boasting. Paul, Paul reminded himself of this. And if you, you have to talk to yourself and remind yourself of the same thing. Paul was talking about humility. And Paul had an experience with God that no other individual in the scriptures ever met. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll find where Paul was caught up in the spirit to the third heavens. See, there is the atmospheric heavens, there's the planetary heavens, and then there's the heaven where God is. I'm not speaking about four levels of heaven. If you're pretty good, you make it to this level. If you're a little bit better, you get to this. But if you're really spiritual and holy, you'll get to the next level. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm speaking about three spheres of heaven. The atmospheric heaven, where the birds and the clouds of the air don't fly. The planetary heavens, where the planets, the moon, the sun, and the stars ain't. But Paul says, I was caught up into a third heaven, and I saw things and heard things that was unlawful for me to speak of. 
And that's why Paul writes in Romans. He says, lest I be exalted above measure. What Paul was saying is God, but you have to read after that where Paul was speaking of the thorn in the flesh. He spoke about his, his revelation that he received from, from God out of 2 Corinthians 12. But then he talks about the thorn in the flesh. And he said, I besought the Lord Christ that he would remove this thorn. No one knows what that thorn in the flesh was. But Paul, God gave him that thorn in order to keep him humble. And Paul says, lest I should be exalted above measure. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 18, it gives us an account where two men went up to the temple, one a publican and the other a Pharisee. And the Pharisees, Pharisee, he began to pray and he, he extolled his virtues and he said, I thank God that I'm not, not, not like other men as this publican is. I tithe, I pray, and I do all these things. And then the publican did so much as lift his head, he bowed his head, he smote himself on the breast, which in biblical days was an analogy, a shadow and type of humility. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Listen to what Jesus says about those two. He said, which one of them went away from the temple justified? He said, the publican. He says, for he that exalts himself shall be abased. But he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Have you ever met those people that come from nothing and got a little something and thought they were something? Be, be careful on your way up. If you forget where you come from, you'll meet them same people on your way back down. The Bible says God gives us humility in an age of boasting. He gives us a message of love and peace for an age of war and hate. Have you ever seen as much hatred in a country that was established on Christian values? So much hatred. This race against that race. This political affiliation against that political affiliation. People uh, hate, just literally hate. But God has given us a spirit of peace for an age of war and an age of hate. He said, I come not to bring a soul. But I come to bring peace. God has a powerful message for the church, for our country, if we will listen. I thank all of you that are present here this morning will agree that God is trying to tell us something. Are we listening? Are we listening to God? And then he gives us a message of hope before an age of despair. In Timothy 2, verse 7, it says, looking for that blessed hope. Where would we be if we didn't have hope? I want to quote a passage of scripture 1 Corinthians 15, 19. And this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He says these words, If only in this life we have hope in Christ Jesus, we of all men, men most visible. He didn't say that the hope we have in Christ Jesus while we have it this earth is wrong. But he said, if only in this life See, our hope is not relegated to this life. Our hope is anchored in Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews, he, said, he says, we have an anchor 
of the soul. We have hope. And let me leave you with this. this. In an age of despair, look to that blessed hope. I thank God that he's in control. And I thank God that he still speaks. He spoke through the prophets. Now he speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who by himself purged our sins. Amen. Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. I think one modern translation says, preach it when it's popular and preach it when it's uncommon. We're not in this thing for a popularity contest. We're in this to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here this morning. And let me say when we, uh, next week, if the weather permits, we'll meet outside. If not, we'll meet inside and we'll begin to meet inside from then on. Uh, we will only have one entrance open in that distance. We're trying to keep it where people want to be all over the church. And so just please remember those rules and regulations. Would you stand? Let me say, if you're here this morning and you don't know the Savior, I'll be up front here. And if you want to come and speak to me after the service, that will be the invitation. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the privilege, once again, to preach the word of God to the people of God. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the all-wise God, both power, dominion, both now and forevermore, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 May God bless you.